Hey everybody, Neil Malik with Knack Training here, bringing another everyday office video. And in today's video, I'd like to demonstrate how I created this effect where I have water filling up a percentage and then sort of rocking gently back and forth. We do this with a couple of animations and a simple technique to cut text out of shapes. Let me go ahead and show you how it's done. So as you can see here, I've got a slide already built. Uh, very simple here, just this is normal text on a black box. You know, this is a picture over here. Not a big deal. So the first step to this process is that I need this black box to have a hole cut in it in the shape of 31% so that then the water can sit behind it and can sort of fill it up. The way we do that is we click on the black box that's in the background here, hold down the shift key and click on the 31%. And now using your drawing tools format tab at the top of the screen, you have an option here called merge shapes and it allows you to combine the shapes together. And what that'll do is it will cut a hole in the black background in the shape of 31%. And you can see this actually in action. Now watch this as I slide this over. See how you can see through the 31% there. It's not just white text. It's actually a hole. Now, the next part of the process is to make the water. Now, there are a couple of different ways of making this happen, um, but I think one of the easier ways is on the Insert tab at the top of the screen. I'm actually going to insert a shape in the shape of just a rectangle, normal rectangle, and I'll just draw a box, you know, roughly up to the halfway point of the percentage. And then I can decide to fill this in with any color I want. I can decide to put an outline around it if I want, but obviously this doesn't look like water um, in that it doesn't have the ripples, right? So the way we make the little ripples in it is we use the format tab at the top of the screen again, and we use the edit shape drop down menu. On there is the option for editing points and watch what I can do here. If I choose edit points, I can just click anywhere on this line and then drag up a little bit and it makes a new point on this normally flat line where it pulls up. Then again, I find a spot on that line and I pull it down. And I find a spot on that line and I pull it up. And I'm just clicking and dragging up and down, up and down to make these simple little waves or ripples or whatever you want to call it. And you're just watching for that crosshairs there to allow you to pull it up and pull it down to your heart's content. Now at that point in the process, all you have to do is click somewhere onto the water and then it will be locked into place. We're going to send this behind the black box in just a second, but let's take a moment here and animate it now. So I'll go over here to my animations tab at the top of the screen. And I want this to use the line animation. I'll use a line animation not to go down, as you can see there, but instead to go up. Okay, so now I need this animation to start lower and to go higher. So I'm just going to pull this down like so, so that it lands right about there. Great. And again, I can test this out. I'll just go up here and click on the animation pane button and I can click on play from and I can see that animation slide up and into place. I probably don't want to have to click to make this happen. So I'll use the drop down menu here and say with previous. Um, so it'll just happen automatically. So that'll slide it up into place. Now I want it to rock back and forth gently. Again, I'll go to my animation tab at the top of the screen, but this time I'll choose add animation and I'll choose another line animation, but this time around I'll have it go left and right. So I'll use effect options and I'll make it go to the left, for example. Now, obviously that's a little too far because the water is going to slide entirely off of those words. So I just click on this little animation bar. And I'm just going to pull this in a little bit. And actually you can offset it a little bit low or a little bit high 
just make sure that it's going to cover up the percentage point, right? Now, if you make it low or high, then it'll make the, the water kind of go up and down very gently. So I think that right there is a good idea. I'll have it start after the previous animation. And uh, yeah, two seconds sounds like a fine amount of time for that to happen. But here's the key. This water needs to sway back and forth, needs to rock us back and forth. So I'll go to this rectangle eight animation, the left and right animation, on the animation pane, use the drop down menu, go to my effect options, and tell it to auto reverse. So it goes to the left and then it comes back to the right. And on the timing tab, I'll tell it to repeat until we get to the end of the slide, till we move on to the next thing. And then click OK. So you can see it rocks back and forth. Of course, I don't want it to sit awkwardly on top of the 31% here. So the last thing I'll do is make sure to send this to the back. The easiest way to do this in my mind is just to keep the selection pane up and running. If I go to the home tab at the top of the screen, use the arrange drop down menu, I can choose selection pane right there. And notice that rectangle eight is now sitting on top of all these entries. I'm just gonna grab rectangle eight and drag it to the bottom of all those entries, just like that. So if I use the keyboard shortcut Shift F5, it will start the presentation from slide number two. You can see that the water comes up and into place, and then it goes back and forth and back and forth. And now you might think that the speed is too fast or too slow. Um, you might think there's too many ripples, too, little, uh, too few ripples. Whatever you want to do there, it's fine. But you can see how cutting the 31% out of the black box and then animating this using the rewind feature as well as the repeat until the end of the slide feature gives us this functionality.